Over the next few minutes, we will describe what a calendar year end is and how to process it in Sage 50. A new calendar year must be started in Sage 50 in order to start processing transactions in that calendar year. As an example, if your current calendar year is the year 2019, you will need to start a new calendar year before creating transactions in 2020. Under certain conditions, you can post transactions to a future calendar year. If you try to process a transaction in a new calendar year before starting it, a message similar to this one will appear. Starting a new calendar year will have the following consequences. Employee year-to-date amounts are set to zero. Automatic payroll calculations are for the current year only. And payroll year-end reports are for the current and previous year only. When starting a new calendar year, the employee year-to-date amounts for taxes, income, deductions, WCB, and other employer expenses are reset to zero and moved to last year. Before starting a new calendar year, you should ensure that all of the payroll transactions for the current year have been processed. If you have a service plan that includes automatic payroll calculations, the automatic payroll calculations only apply to payroll entries created in the current year. After starting a new calendar year, the program no longer automatically calculates payroll taxes for the prior calendar year. For example, if you start the year 2020, the program will no longer calculate payroll taxes for the year 2019. Payroll year-end reports such as T4s and RL1s can be generated in Sage 50 for the current calendar year and for the previous calendar year. After starting a new calendar year, you can no longer generate year-end reports for the year before the prior calendar year. For example, if you start the year 2020, you will be able to generate T4s for the years 2019 and 2020. You will no longer be able to generate T4s for the year 2018. Sage 50 includes a built-in checklist for calendar year-end procedures. Select the Business Assistant menu and click Checklists to access the checklists available in Sage 50. Double-click on Calendar Year-End Procedures to open the list. Before starting a new calendar year, we recommend going through the checklist carefully as some of the items in the checklist can no longer be performed after you start the year. You can print the list by clicking File and then Print. Note that you can mark each item on the list as complete every time you complete a task by clicking on the Done button. Depending on your business requirements, you may not need to complete every item on the list. You may also have specific requirements to add to the list. All of the checklists available in Sage 50 can be customized. From the Calendar Year and Procedures window, click any of the existing items to modify them or remove them. Click in any empty row to add an item to the checklist. After modifying the list, click Save. We will now start a new calendar year. To start a new calendar year, click Maintenance and select Start New Year. If your fiscal year does not coincide with the calendar year, this window appears. We'll select Calendar Year and click OK. When prompted to create a backup, we strongly recommend clicking Yes and OK to go through the steps of creating a backup. We'll enter the backup information and click OK. After starting the new year, this message appears. The new fiscal year is now created. At this point, depending on the items in your year-end checklist, you may need to complete additional tasks, such as updating your employees' personal tax credit claims and WCB rates. Congratulations! You now know how to start a new calendar year.